Et what's up tout le monde? Bienvenue chez Les Généralistes, le podcast où on parle business, technologie et culture. Mon nom est Ramsley et je suis avec Alexander. What's good, what's good? All right, donc on a un épisode spécial. Je pense que ça va être peut-être notre deuxième Franglish, English episode. I don't know, I'm feeling English today with our guests as well. Um, Aujourd'hui, on a H et Miro de 6 5 e Donc on va le laisser se présenter and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, you know, everything next. Yo! You, me? No, you go first. Me go first? Okay, yeah. I thought you were going to say hi at least before. <laughs> like, I didn't want to just start talking. Nah, you but you go first. Yes, okay, so uh, hi. Um, thank you guys for having us. Um, I'm Ash. I'm co-founder and CEO of our branding agency, creative agency, Um I won't go too much into it. I'll just stick with the titles and we could jump dive deeper i guess throughout the conversation like that for sure for sure thank you for having us um my name is miro co-founder and president of sis Kim creative agency here in montreal and uh, yeah i'm here alive cool. hey, feeling great that's what matters <laughs> that's it that's it and i'm really excited to have you guys here because i think that you know as, as creative in montreal um you guys really are in the top you know and you're, you're you've had I think a, a good press run about the, the new agency you've created together, and I think that you guys have big dreams. Uh, you guys are really here to take a lot of place in the industry, and we want to have maybe dive into deeper into that into your mind. So um, maybe to start, we'll, we'll ask, what is Sisenkem? What is a creative agency? What do you guys do? So Sisenkem, basically, we specialize in branding, and we help businesses and entrepreneurs understand who they are. We help them have a, a deeper understanding of what their business is, who they are, and we guide them in helping them communicate what that is through visuals and design and, yeah. Like, in other words, we're the reason why your audience should care about you. Like, mm. straight up, that's what we do. We help you define why your audience should care. And, yeah, that's, that's what Sisan Kim is all about, you know? That's pretty cool. Um, so you're talking about customers, right? How do you reconcile how you want to be perceived by the customer and who you do you want to be f from a business standpoint? Because sometimes there's like kind of a disconnect, right? Some mm -hmm. brands will be like, oh, we want to help the community, but then it feels like they're pondering and some others are doing it better. Like how do you reconcile the customer perception to what a business really want to be? Honestly, like as simple as it sounds, it's just asking a lot of questions and less listening, you know, like mm. um, when we work with, with, you know, with our clients and everything of that nature, like we spend more, more, more of our time listening than anything, you know what I'm saying? And by listening, you know, we get ideas and it just became, it just starts painting a picture in our head, you know? So I don't know if you like, you want to dive a little bit deeper and then on your end, but... Um. Well, when you're talking about like reconciling, are you talking more about the perception that we build around our business compared to how customers approach yeah, us? Yeah, because or? what what is tricky about branding in 2021 is like people trying to define who you are, but you're trying to be maybe something else. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's like kind of a disconnect, right? Because mm -hmm. the customer has so much power nowadays that it can literally define what the brand means. Mm. But sometimes the brand don't want to mean that. So like, I'm wondering in those kind of discussions that you have with client, how does that, you know, happen and how do you reconcile both on like, yeah, be yourself, mm -hmm. but at the same time, trying to tell it to your customers. But I feel like mm. it, okay. seems hard. Yes. it seems to be hard. Like, I don't know, that's why I'm asking you. I, so the way that I see it, um, I don't like the idea of, because it's true, and we, we get this question a lot, like where, where clients, well, when we do workshops, people will ask this question a lot, like, oh, like, you know, I, I want to be authentic, but I also want to cater to my audience, as if the two are mutually exclusive, but they're not. I feel like um, 
by being authentic, you attract that specific target um, that you're going for. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to try to be or bend over backwards. Mm. Um, so that's kind of how how we tend to approach things. It's like, listen, like don't worry so much about trying to trying to get to this target because sometimes you think that your target is one thing and then you realize that you're actually attracting a totally different crowd that's not in your control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's more like don't worry about trying to get customers and trying to make them happy because then you're going to spread yourself thin and like try to be a people pleaser and you don't want that. That's the opposite of authenticity. So with branding, like authenticity is so important because to me it's like it's the soul of your business and your company. Um, and you can't, you know, so I see businesses as like a person. Like you, if you're trying to attract um a mate, you're trying to 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 attract someone. Like you're trying to get into a relationship, you're not gonna pretend to be something you're not because you're not gonna attract the right person. You're not gonna attract the right people. That's how I see it. That's that's why like with us, we spend a lot of time helping clients define what their why is. You know, like mm. I don't feel like you should start any business, any venture if you don't have a strong why because your why helps you get the consumers that you're trying to get. You get what I'm trying to say? You're yeah. connecting with, your why helps you connect emotionally with your consumers on your audience. A lot of people start these businesses and everything like that and they don't take the time to really, like why are you starting this business? Which problem are you really solving and really dive deep in it instead of looking at it at a very surface level mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh, you know, I just want to start this company. I'm trying to get this X number of clients. I'm trying to get this specific, no, 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 no. Mm. Let's start at the core identify why are you starting this journey let's develop that and find ways to communicate that mm. why because once you start communicating it people it's going to start resonating with the right crowd and that's who ultimately that's is your, amazing. your, your and, consumer you know book plug simon sinek start with why great yes. book. one of the best books yes, yes. Um, so look into it so so maybe i want to stay on the why for for a few minutes because you know um we see you moving in the industry, but maybe our listeners might not know who you are, right? They might not know what is Sysenkem. They might not know why Sysenkem. So can you guys maybe take us back to, you know, how did you guys start the, the business and maybe like how did it all kind of come together and why did the name? And how did you guys get into maybe your first few clients? Was it from your already experienced, your network that you already had in the business, or was it really that you had to get out there and go get those first few clients for your agency? Mm. Well, Several questions. Yeah. <laughs> Several questions. I, sorry, I asked like long <laughs> questions. Loaded. I just want a timeline, basically. You know, just, so. <laughs> to, get, to, to simplify the answer, well, like, you know, me and Ash were both, in the, it started off when we were both individually on our own creative journey. Ash was studying school, studying graphic design. I, I was out here in the streets, like trying to figure things out. I started off as a stylist and then I kind of started um, directing music videos and it just, I was just building up my network, just really out in the streets like that, you know? And, you know, um, one day me and Ash, um, someone contacted me and Ash for a project. They were trying to hire me as a creative director and Ash was the designer. And we met during that initial meeting um, you know, we stayed in contact. It was, you know, like we were filling each other, you know what I'm saying? And like during that process, it's just like, I was still having my projects and I would invite Ash along to, you know, just, just, just come hang out during my projects, you know, my photo shoots or my video shoots. And she would always be super critical of like the the aesthetic of things. She was just like, oh, you know, the color correction of this is, is off. The fonts that you use is off. And she was just very like critical seeing things that I didn't see because I didn't went to school for, for design or anything, you know? And I was just like, damn, like you're good at this, you know? And uh, let's find a way to like kind of put this together. And organically it started off like that. and. Um, in 2018, we we launched um, the company. At the time, it was called Divi Productions, and where Ashley was more on the creative direction, design aspect. I was more on the, you know, relationship building, you know, marketing strategy aspect, and like, you know, we're just operating under Divi Productions, and you know, um, we're building up a. a you know, a name for ourselves during that process. And 
last year um we rebranded to sis and kim because you know um 2020 we we're like yo you know what we're gonna start like really do things properly like meaning that having like the right accountant the right lawyer and all that stuff and when we try to trademark our name we realized that like yo like divi is trademarked by another advertisement agency here in canada so okay. technically we cannot operate under that name so we're like yo let's let's change the name we changed the name to sisan cam we trademarked that name and everything like that and uh, I don't know if you want to go into more of the details of like where the Sis and Kim comes from yes. specifically. Um, so Sis and Kim six fifths is referring to the six cents. So six on top of the basic mm. five senses that everyone has. And so six six the sixth sense is referencing um, basically creativity in general, like that creative intuition that um, we all have some people are tapped into it a little bit more than others but just the ability to use our basic senses um, and find inspiration and in mundane things and the regular you know mm. everyday things and create something amazing with it and be inspired by 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 you know regular things that you see in your day-to-day -day. that spark of inspiration that feeling you get when you're creating that's the sixth. That's the sixth mm -hmm. sense that we're referring to in the name Sis Sankyem. So that's where that comes from. Um, when it comes to like our our clients, like the first clients we got, I think it was a combination of us merging our yeah. network together. Merging our networks, a lot of I feel like for everyone, it starts off a lot of word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I think that's just like the basic like the basic thing and so as we're getting what well, like when we started it was a lot of word of mouth it's like hey i do graphic design oh cool i heard you do graphic design like you know i have this this logo that i need you know how much you charge not knowing how much to charge you charge like yeah. pennies for it and you know slowly but surely you start to understand like how to operate as a as a <laughs> freelancer and then next level how to operate as a business like when we first started out it was very Miro and I as freelancers two freelancers that work together that's how we worked and that's how people approached us now with Sisankyam and even with when we started with Divi it was more like we we wanted to shed that skin of being perceived as just like freelancers and order takers and like someone that you could just call up hey do this logo for me i want it to be blue and and with this name and okay cool i'll do that it trans it it turned into no like we're an actual business we're professionals we're the ones who are going to tell you what you need and help your business rather mm. than like we're we're providing a solution and help to your business rather than just you know, taking orders and fulfilling that order. That's yeah, we're that's not order the takers. That definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, and I love that, and I think that um, kind of brings to another point that uh, Miro, you mentioned before the the, the podcasting start, uh, the recording started was that you are looking. You said that you know I work at Deloitte, works at McKinsey, and that's something that you guys are looking into in terms of the way that you shape your company. I think that's that's really interesting. Can you kind of dive more into details about like what you meant when, when you mentioned that? Yeah, because the thing with creative agencies or just creative fields, a lot of people focus on the outcome, you know, like, so if you look at a logo, you just be like, oh, you know, it's red or, you know, you can see the surface thing, but there's a whole idea and psychological aspect that goes behind that, you know? So when I see like companies like Deloitte and McKenzie, how they're operating in terms of consultants and really coming in and helping them really change like an internal culture in companies that thus then that change has an impact on the external, though that's like a mindset and like something that we're really trying to implement in our business, you know? So we don't, we don't really look at other creative agencies what they're doing, you know? We're putting, we're, we're, we're seeing what other companies like that are doing and see like, okay, how can we merge, you know, business strategies and creativity together and just create this, this new thing. So that's why even with us, a lot of clients come to us and, you know, like they're shocked when they realize that we don't really spend that much time talking about the aesthetic or 
how the final product is going to look like. You know, we spend mm. more time understanding who's the end user, who, um, like what is the end, end, end users about, what is your why, how can we connect that together? You know, what's the long term vision? What's the short term vision? You know, what are what are important KPIs we need we need to start implementing? Like, those are the conversations that me and Ash we really spend a lot of times um, having with our with our with our clients, and then from there it makes it easier to execute on the creative and everything else because it's yeah. no brainer. That's like 15, 20% of what we do. Everything else is discovery and ideation. And you know, that's what I kind of, I feel about like Mackenzie and Deloitte kind of does something similar. And those are th aspects that I'm kind of like very interested in, honestly, you know? And I like the fact that like, you know, they work with like big companies like Google, Facebook, and they just come in and just be like, yo, you know what, we're gonna come here and tell you guys what is your problem, you know? That's a big ticket right there, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they charge a couple of M's just to tell you what is your problem and you know, if you wanna solve it, here's another thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, that's facts. <laughs> like, I mean, in, in Montreal right now, in 2020, 2021, uh, probably before that, but I, you know, it it came to my attention at that moment. Um, there's a lot of creative and a lot of people that are from our community, mm -hmm. but I feel like the problem is they ha they have a hard time to monetize, mm -hmm. and even when they monetize, it's not the same prices. And of course, there is that you know situation from like a, a systemic perception, like we all know that. Mm -hmm. But what would be you know your tip to like a creative to actually start to think as a business? and trying to create that leap. And I really want to be like super tech, like tactical about that question because I think that's very helpful for me, you know, people that listen to us. Mm. Making the leap from like artist, just artists doing it for fun and create and like creative business, like taking yourself seriously as an entrepreneur, to me it's it's a, it's a choice. Like it's a it's a mindset shift that you choose to make. Because, yes, there are a lot of creatives and who are super talented, um, but they may only care about the creative aspect of things and not realizing, like, when if you do want to start, start making money f and, and turn this into a lucrative thing, um, you need to do the boring stuff. Yeah. You know, you you need to take yourself seriously. You need to do the things that you don't like doing. Or at least understand it. And understand Just, it. Like, even if well. you don't want to physically be the one to do it, I think there has to be some sort of, um, what's that word? Like, um, understanding, I think yeah, so. understanding like, I mean, or comprehension, like, like you know, just to know know it, even if it's just a surface level, surface level of accounting and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I feel like that's important. But yeah, no, because that's that's what that's what made the difference for us. Is like, um, you know, when we started out, we were focused just on being artists and creatives, and like focused just on the content side of things. Focused on like, okay, we want to create um, work that looks dope because that's a reflection of us as artists and creatives and it stopped like it ends there and we wanted that to be paid just for that to be paid um because we do dope work and it looks pretty but there's no real value behind it you know aside from looking good yeah um and so to you do you do need to make that mindset shift shift to like detach from the you know, creative side of things and actually like providing value. And a lot of creatives, like they don't care about, you know, if you're an artist at heart, you don't, you're not creating for others. You're doing it for yourself and to fulfill your own passions and, you know, bring your own ideas to life. Um, but there's, there's a certain plateau that you reach unless you're trying to become a fine artist or something. But um, when you're a business, you're in service to others. You need to provide value to others. Um, so you, there's a there's a mindset shift that needs to happen there. I, mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people aren't willing to make because it's like, no, I just want to do the fun, cool, creative stuff, yeah. and not do the boring stuff and really reflection and thinking about, okay, like how am I, you know, actually helping others and, you know, doing doing that work. I this think, is important. That's yeah. a, like because that's the thing, right? It's it's about the process, and you were saying, you know. We're talking about that. Yeah. Um, even maybe, somebody that, that I, I was just gonna say, like maybe on that, I think it kind of goes back to what you were saying before on how, you know, as you kind of delve into 
you both of you coming together and create a company, you were kind of like getting away from that freelancer kind of mindset and going yeah. to that, you know, creative agency mindset, which is that this is the value added. And like you mentioned about having that, you know, management consultant mindset that, you know, the creative side of it mm. becomes smaller and smaller and smaller because the value also comes from the processes, mm -hmm. it comes from the strategy, mm -hmm. it comes from the innovation as yeah, well, right? A lot of it that, like, a lot as well, you know, um, a big a big factor to all of this is that um, is to be able to com is to realize that creativity have um, a huge impact on businesses, and as a creative or artist, you have to be able to understand that and communicate that. You know, like you have to be able to communicate to your clients and to the people you work with that like this creative process that I'm doing is going to impact your business and that's where you have to you have to use terminologies like you know your bottom line ROI KPI, and then, you know yeah, city, those are the yeah. things and you have to be able to communicate that you know like how branding is going to posit positively affect your your business in the long run and everything and you know sometimes creators are they have a hard time to explain that they have it in their head they know they know branding or yeah. creativity is important but you have to be able to dumb it down and like communicate it efficiently with the people that you're working with. And I think that's a huge part of that mindset as well, that, 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 mm -hmm. that switch. Not and just branding, but I'm, you know, any creative, if yeah. you're a photographer, if you're an artist and you do murals even, like yeah. to be able to know how to speak business and know your worth and your and your value and it's like you know i'm doing this mural for this festival this is going to bring you know more people to your festival more eyes to your festival more money to your festival so that therefore i bring value yeah. and this is my worth like to to be able to speak business with the people that you're working with that's what will also help you make that transition even if you're doing something super super creative um like Speaking that language um, will make it so that people won't take advantage of you. Because people, business people, take advantage of, of artists. Mm -hmm. and yeah. of anyone, like, all I mean, the time. Because because they know. Even happens to us. Even yeah, yeah. as 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 established that we look and everything, but we're in a situation where it's like, yo, like they're trying to lowball us on this. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, how are we going to communicate to them that we're low, they're lowballing us, and then? we communicate back yeah. to them and we tell them like, no, this doesn't make sense because X, Y, Z, this, 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 and the third, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. So it's like, it's a constant thing that you have to go, you have to go through, but at the same time, like the bigger you get and more credibility and recognition that you develop for yourself, the less that happens. That's what I think. And, you know? and the follow-up question on that, so you were saying that um, you do less and less creative thing. Um, so how do you create a culture within your own company regarding kind of the, 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 creativity that you guys want to transfer basically to your team like how do you communicate your baseline or your creative standard to your team and why why am i asking that um so i'm a bit of a stalker i've been on your twitter right <laughs> and you just did a great project with miguel uh university and somebody asked you a question like oh the thing is so responsive or i don't even remember exactly and you yeah, were like stuff. hey you need to talk with that guy he did it <laughs> but you know what i'm saying and i i know that you you also had like an intern right so like, how do you communicate your creative standards or vision to your team while you guys actually take care of the business behind it? Mm, that's, that's, that's interesting. I think on our end, that's something that we're still constantly figuring out, mm -hmm. you know, like that's something that like, we don't really have the answers to, to be very honest. But one thing that we could say that we're grateful for and that we're very good at is like, we're good at like, picking out the right people to work with, you know, like, mm. and at the same time, the right people do come to us, you know, and that's why, like, you know, like, I kind of put myself out there, make people understand my mindset and stuff like that, because I realize that helps attract the right people who want to yeah. work with us, because they kind of understand our mindset, they kind of understand our standards, so they, 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 I, I feel like they kind of have that pressure to be like, oh, not say pressure, but the right people will come you know like, mm -hmm. yeah you know like it's it's again i think it's a it's a question of our own branding and that's why branding yeah. is really important not only branding helps you attract the right clients it helps you attract the right people who's going to work with you as well oh. too you know mm -hmm. so it works both mm -hmm. ways so it's like if your branding is good it's easier to form partnerships collaborations get clients charge a premium all those wonderful things like and 
you know, we're proof of that. That was really cool. No, no, and um, I think it, I think it's nice because like and like Alex mentioned, now you have an, you had an intern, and I think that's a it's a step shout out to Abias. You know, yeah. I, you know <laughs> what I'm saying. By the so way, I just want to talk about him for two seconds. That's what I wanted to get into because I want to know like what was the process of you saying like let's bring it's something. Not, in. It's not just that like personally. So the guy once uh-huh. he when I was at Deloitte, he sent me a DM on Instagram and he was like, yo, I'd like to meet. And after that, I like forgot about it. He follow up and I respect people that follows up. Like if mm. someone, yeah. and I'm mm-hmm. saying that to everybody, like if you're following up with me, I will answer for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, and I answered it. He was like, yo, I don't know where you're at, but um, I would like to just grab coffee with you. Mm. And then we went to the Starbucks in front of the Lord mm-hmm. and we just spoke. And then we never really talked about it afterward. You know, he said thanks. And then after that, you know, just checking up on me and me checking up on him, like, from a high level. But all that to say that he's a hustler. He yeah, is. He is. Like, <laughs> like, I don't, he is. like, I, I didn't even remember his name. I just saw his face. I was like, no way. <laughs> yeah. like, I, like, I know this guy, man. Hold hold on, on, I think on, he yeah. went to Champlain. Now that my memory is bringing me back. Uh-huh. All that to say, great guy. And sorry for cutting you off. No, it's but, fine. Like, it's personally, fine. I think that. He's, but I wanted you guys to talk a bit about that experience of having an intern and, and you deciding to say we need to bring someone in because you're in the world of freelancers, right? You're the world of creative when people work on contracts. So what was that decision to say, you know, let's bring on someone on the payroll and, you know, let's let's make it a part of our, of our team, you know? Um, I guess I, you want me to no, go? No. Uh, well, um, for, for Abias, um, he reached out to us just like yo you know just like yo, you, <laughs> you, guys <laughs> have an intern, you have guys have an internship and like it was with his school he was graduating um he was studying marketing and he had to do intern so his teacher also contacted us as well too they're like oh you know we would love if he could be part of your internship so it was kind of like us and his school you know so we just we just i was just like whatever i'm, I'm down with it why not you're studying mar- um, marketing and it was cool like it was really cool like um you know, I had him kind of shadow us, you know, although like everything was mostly virtual, but like yeah. all the meetings that we had and everything like that, I had him kind of like shadow us, you know, like he had his own task, but it was really like, I, I just really had him kind of just join in to kind of just soak up the game as much as possible and kind of understand how we how we think and how we operate internally. And it, and it's, it was cool. Like, it's cool. I wish more people actually hit us up for internships, honestly. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of people are kind of scared to reach us out. And, yeah. you know, we spoke to, um, shout out to Rama, but she was even saying, she's like, oh, you guys, we should create like a, a, program. We should, a pro- program and actually brand that program. Like, you know, like yeah. internship from X, X day to whatever and just like do a little call out. So I mm. think that's something that we're going to do. But like, I, I like working with interns. I like working with young creatives, man. I like I like working with people who are younger than me. Yeah, because younger they know and, the more, and smarter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they know the answers. <laughs> yeah. Like my little brother is fifteen or sixteen. He knows like we don't even listen to the same music. Like I don't know who like mm-hmm. KK whatever. I don't know them. Mm-hmm. Like he understands something a little bit more about marketing than I do. You know, mm-hmm. regarding TikTok. Like I don't have an account. I don't know, mm-hmm. but he was telling me about how it works. And I have like one follow up about what you just said, and then one question I want to ask you. Um, the thing is, I think that people are scared to actually work. I don't know if you were paying him and like, it doesn't really matter, but in terms of like working for free or just asking someone to like follow him for like a month mm-hmm. or two, like mm-hmm. the value of that, even though you might not have, you know, more money in your bank account is bigger than money mm-hmm. because the real problem that we have in my opinion in Canada is not necessarily like capital, but it's more access because we just don't have access to the kind of discussions or that kind of learning mm-hmm. um, most of the time. And your parents probably don't even know what marketing is. Like, I mean, my, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so all that to say that, you know, everybody that want to do something, just reach out to someone that does something that interests you and just like tell them, like send me the zoom link yeah. every week. Yeah. I will just be there. Mm-hmm. And that's highly valuable. Second question. Um, I have a hard time being, I, I'm a grateful person, but how do you balance being grateful for your opportunities and wanting more without feeling bad about not caring enough about what you just did? And why am I asking that is because, for example, you guys went on a, like a big media run um, and that's pretty cool and having a lot of you know great project as well. But how do you balance being more hungry and still respecting the, the work that you've done when you're at night? Because I'm the type of person that I yeah. do something 
And sadly, I will not value that thing anymore. I will just be grateful from a macro perspective, but not about that thing anymore. And I think that's low-key not the good thing. So I was wondering if you guys think about that. Or maybe yeah. it's... And like, how do you... If you have an answer, or maybe not, but I don't, I don't know. I think it's very common for ambitious people to feel like that like i think that's how we are too like we're exactly the same like we'll Mm. do a dope project and then sometimes we'll we'll you know we're grateful while we're doing it but then once it's passed it's it's passed and you know we're we're on to the next thing thinking about the next thing um i don't know if it's a bad thing like I feel like we're grateful. We're grateful, right? Like we express gratitude, um, you know, daily or weekly. Like we'll sometimes we'll just be in the house and you'll be like, I'm grateful for these opportunities <laughs> for that are sure. coming. That well. And like, you know, so like I think we're grateful, but we also I don't think it's a bad thing to see the bigger picture because there's a fine line between um like we we don't want to get to a point where we do a super cool project and you know it's it's great it's amazing but we're stuck in that um you know feeling of like hyping ourselves up for that one project mm-hmm. you know? that's like my biggest where fear. we're gonna get comfortable like we don't want to get mm-hmm. comfortable and so that's why we're like I think it's okay to mm. you know be grateful for the things that are happening and then move on to the next thing and take it you know one step at a time you know that's my biggest fear that, you know like when she was just talking about like being grateful and stuff like that I only started practicing that recently because me I would never ever look at my past work like that you know even our past work I, I don't really look at it as much because I have a huge fear of being comfortable and being very um with the high of like you know people think that the work that we do is good and everything I try my best to block out that shit as much as possible because I, I have a huge fear of just being comfortable and I don't like being comfortable I like to feel uncomfortable I like to feel you know I like the feeling of I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow because it's gonna keep me on my grind you know and I'm more of the big visionary person Ash is more her natural state is more like focusing on the now and everything like that. Mm. So it's just like, I guess we kind of balance each other out, but it's just like me recently, I just started like, you know, being grateful for these things and just realizing like, yo, I'm actually doing this shit full time. I don't have a boss, but, you know, I make my own hours. I'm working on these amazing projects. I'm meeting so many amazing people. I'm influencing people, blah, blah, blah. So I have to take the time and just really like acknowledge that because, you know, uh, I have to be grateful for that, you know? That's cool. No, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope, and and I think that you know what you guys said is it's important as well. Um, maybe I, w- I want to segue into the bit of the future, right? I think you guys have been in the creative space for some time. Um, we're not creatives. People say that we might be. We, we talk with Hannah. It's just nah. like you guys are creative. Everyone, hold on. I'm just gonna correct. Creative. I'm just gonna correct you. <laughs> Everyone is creative. There's no such thing as someone not being creative. Everyone's creative in their own different ways. Like, you know, a creative could just be the way you think and you look mm-hmm. at a problem and you come up with solutions in any aspect. Like, everyone is creative. It's just, mm. it's just different. I mean, I mean, I mean, I put, cho- I put chocolate milk. Some artwork. I put chocolate milk uh, in my cereal, so I guess I'm a creative. I don't know what's happening. So I guess, I guess you know we're out there, right? But um, you put the milk first. No, never. <laughs> For real. You gotta put the cereal first. Then you know how much milk you need to put. Ah. You put the milk first. You put the milk. First? I mean, I mean, I know people that does like it's actually like a like an argue an argument. Like it's an argument, but I don't get it. Like I'm not like you gotta put the, the cereal first. Then you know how milk. Like I respect that. You know what I mean? It's like cutting your hair too short, and you're like, oh, I wanted it longer. Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's like I mean? backwards. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's like putting your shoes on before your pants. Exactly. That's weird. Oh, no, it doesn't fit. In. That doesn't work. <laughs> wow. So we solved it, people. Um, sorry, but, go ahead. Like, no, but I yeah, just, but, um, I want get get hear your thoughts about like what excites you about the future of the creative space. Maybe not even in Montreal, just technology, technology NFTs, maybe not like let, let's talk about the future right now. Your company, what excites you right now? Damn. Um. I don't know, like me, like every every day is exciting. Like just tomorrow is exciting because we don't know what's gonna happen. Like it, literally, I'm just excited to learn more because like we're still very young. Mm-hmm. Like we're we babies. only launched in 2018, even though we've been, you know, we, we have maybe like six years of experience 
experience in our own respective fields but like I don't know like um, I'm just excited to learn more and see where that's going to take me and where that's going to take this business like right to, right now I'm a creative director um, and, and, and brand strategist maybe in two three years I'm going to be something completely different because I'm going to learn so much more mm-hmm. and from working in different industries and things like that you know so that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to see like where this evolution is gonna take us and what's gonna happen because we have like a long-term vision, but we're not stuck on that vision because we know that anything can happen and it's gonna change. Yeah. So that's what I'm excited for. Yeah, I mean, I'm just happy um, just the growth, honestly, kind of like what you're saying, like the fact that like, you know, going in different industries and stuff like that, that's the thing that really, excites me you know like as much as like you know we try to plan everything that we plan doesn't manifest the way we want it to manifest so it's like you know i just know that we're just gonna continually evolve and just do different things we might be designing cars next time you know we might have like Mm. like you know aviation company i don't know like (laughs) it's it's, it, it, it could just evolve and it really depends on what makes sense you know but I'm just more that's the thing that makes me excited you know like we're only at like one not even one percent of our journey Mm -hmm. I'll say like we're not even one percent not even like like the vision that we have for like the world and everything like this is just like a small fraction of that journey so it's like that's amazing there's like a recurring theme about like being only comfortable and I think that people have a hard time with this yeah personally uh, i'm that type of person like as you jump in things and i'm like i'm building a plane while i'm flying type of thing mm. and i guess you guys kind of feel the same about yeah. this and i just feel what is great about you know like him or not what is great about like for example virgil Ablo and those guys is that they just transfer the creativity into anything it could yeah. be mercedes mm-hmm. it could be like i think he got like a sound system with like bnh yeah. or BN, whatsoever I mean, yeah. he did you that. did a car with bmw didn't you he hmm? did a car as well right yeah he did a car with mercedes that mercedes, it looks yeah. like a cube yeah, yeah. Or something like that he went into you know i can't it, forgive him for the pop smoke album yeah, he did. yeah. <laughs> i ain't gonna lie i ain't gonna lie but that was a, that was an ugly ass cover but whatever. I mean, <laughs> because i feel like virgil is at the point where like he's too big to fail so like no matter what happens people still think it's dope like he could do any he could I mean, like I think it was dope but it's fine yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also I think he's at the space where he's just having fun yeah exactly yeah, and, that's, and that's what I'm saying yeah, and exactly. I think it's great to see people like that showing us how creativity actually goes into like yeah. you can do anything yes. and just yeah. deal with any brands and yeah. like it doesn't really matter at this point yeah because yeah, creativity uh-huh. at the basis is just problem solving mm-hmm. that's yeah. all it is it's it's not the color it's not how big or small the thing is what are it's just problem solving that's and all what creativity is doing i have a question for you which is a follow-up of my stalking behavior <laughs> um so you had a tweet about the fact that and i feel kind of the same what is really interesting with like malcolm x and tupac is that you see their growth right like you saw them like you saw malcolm x before his travels to like Africa and then he came back and he was like more collaborative or like I don't what whatsoever so we kind of saw the biggest flaw so like what is your biggest flaw regarding your creative skills and I'm asking that to mm. both of you biggest flaw fuck oh. in your opinion because for some people it might just not be but like regarding our creative skills yeah. I know mine's right away what's yours I think too big is that a flaw though? I, it could be a flaw, mm. you know, because Depends. even sometimes when we work with some, yeah. some, some collaborators, my vision is too big. And sometimes <laughs> it's too, it's too much for them. So it's like, whoa, mm. yeah. okay, it's like, okay, okay, now, okay, okay, okay. I have to get in the habit of scaling down, but it's just like, you know, like sometimes I feel like that's, that's a big thing for me. I can't think small it's really 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 hard and i'm not saying small in a negative way but it's yeah, hard yeah. for me to to be more practical yeah, about it. Micro, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's micro, more like mat. taking yeah. things step by step like sometimes it'll be like a client um let's say for example they need a website and then miro will be like oh like you know we should we should do this that and the third and put all these cool things on the website i was like 
Well, yeah, but hold on. They don't hold need on. that. Let me, let, me, yes. let, me, let me say let me like, say that because I'm looking at it from the long term perspective. Exactly. It's like, long term. Like, yeah, you but want you want the cheapest way right step. now, yeah. but like mm-hmm. in the long run, you're gonna be spending more yeah. money. I'm helping you save more money to do it, the the big chunk of it now. So in the future, you're not spending more money. So it's it's not even yeah. to say like I'm trying to impose. It's just like I'm looking at it from a practical it's, sense as well yeah. too. It's like yeah. But not everyone thinks like that. Yeah, and That's sometimes that, like, that connection is hard. You have to meet them at their level. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, I have to scale back yeah. and just give them what they need now and let them play around with it till the time is right. Yeah. yeah. Come like back. in yeah. consulting, we call that phases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like we never come into a client and be like, you need to change everything, like throw everything out. It's yeah. like, let's do the first phase. Yeah. And just to yeah. get them a bit more comfortable. And they're like, oh shit, okay. Yeah. Now yeah. you're talking. <laughs> now after that, they call you for like, timeline, oh, yeah. I remember you spoke about that. So I do agree that it's it's really not a bad thing. It's just more a matter of... It's a matter of communicating, right? Communicating, yes. yeah. Like you said yes. before, mm-hmm. What is yours now? Um, I know yours, but whatever. You, oh. you, you say you know mine? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if you can say it. I don't know. Honestly, like, I'm, really? it's hard to think. What is it? What is it? No, I forget it's going to be on the record. Perfectionist. Know. Oh, I'm a perfectionist? Yeah. The <laughs> details guess. bother her a lot. But the okay. details are important. <laughs> but then again, it's important. It's important. The details are important because yeah. the details are important because that's what makes the difference between quality and average. Yes. It's all in the details. I agree with you, babe. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if our collaborators don't know can't tell the difference and, our, and the target market cannot turn, turn the dif- tell the difference like is but that you is can, that change is, is that change really you important you can tell the difference or it's more coming sub- from personal you, no you can tell the difference on a subconscious level if you know if you're getting a, 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 a fake a fake a fake shoe versus the real thing it's in the details that you could tell the difference it's, mm. it's so interesting you know because mean? basically Stock earlier you were talking about the fact that you need to serve client, and I guess that you need to serve what details mean to them. Yeah. While hearing you right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I've gotten like I've gotten better at that. Like I don't. Yeah, think for I'm, sure, it's a process. I, when we started out, it was like really like yeah. more yeah. like stuck yeah. on the details, but Be- now I'm because it's not so as bad. hard to know when it's good enough. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that part, you know, because perfection slows you down in yeah. so many ways right and a lot yeah. of people don't start something because mm-hmm. of that yeah. oh my god my website is not perfect I cannot launch my product tomorrow like, like so <laughs> some people kind of like you know no, kind no. of go through that and need to learn that mm-hmm. the, the reality is like the more that you do the more people it's, actually you love. know you know when, when to stop to when people like it yeah and people well, like right? it it's like, it's, it's like because the reality is like the more that you do the more people like you know, like, qu'est-ce que tu fais? Mais ton truc est toujours meilleur based on something that you did in the past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like a Drake song. Yeah. Like, the, you know, les, les chansons qui sont sorties récemment is not his best, but they still feel like the best song ever mm-hmm. because he did a lot of great shit before. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the kind of mindset we need to, you know, remember that we need to put things into the universe mm-hmm. and every time it's kind of scaling up even yeah. if we're not but it's even like the lean the lean startup kind of like methodology where you, yeah, like you put a prototype MVPs and then yes. you yeah. put an agile yeah. methodology and mm-hmm. then you know it's not perfect but it works and then you yeah. can iterate mm-hmm. on it and then so see that's right. what i mean when i'm saying like i got better because at first i was very um trying to make things perfect the first time mm-hmm. now i think i'm more like trying to make things perfect with w- what I can like with what I like controlling what I can control for yeah. now and doing the best I can f- for that first step at and least also realizing mm-hmm. that like you know a lot of our clients that we work with they are in the startup phase so everything that we're doing now is part of their MVP you know what I'm saying so it's like mm. you know yeah. so we have rooms where it's like true, true. it's okay if things are a bit flawed it's okay because you know, like improve. how you said, like the whole prototype, because, mm-hmm. you know, it's good to like assess and get collect um, feedback mm-hmm. on the thing that you're putting out there and yeah. fine tune as you go along. Like I tell people all the time, like our company is still in the MVP stage. I own I, this everything right now. We're still testing out things, yeah. services, mm-hmm. even how we describe ourselves and things like that. This yeah. is all testing, testing. We're just collecting information with our collaborators and yeah. then. At the end of the year, we're gonna do a little, mm-hmm. a little revamp and see what we can improve on. That, that's know? pretty cool. I, I think it's another theme of like self awareness mm-hmm. and being willing also to like be like, oh, I was wrong, or like, this is better, yeah. or, like, mm-hmm. and that and that is hard as well. It's 
yeah, it's complex. Yeah, and maybe about self-awareness, actually, you know, um, another question that, that we had is, you know, clearly you guys are black tone, you know, we're four black people on the table. Um, I'm pretty sure you've been asked that some, so many times, but I, I kind of want to hear you about, like, what does that represent for you? Because, you know, there's definitely a movement of for us by us, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, you say you have big ambitions, you want to take over the world. I think you even said you want to, you want to work with NASA, if I'm not mistaken. Um, how do you guys see that? Like, because, like, for example, as, as a, you know, as a podcast, I don't think we would have asked someone from Sydney to come in because, like, I don't know, I don't relate personally to what they're doing. But, like, just seeing you, seeing how you move in the space, seeing how, you know, you're talking about the culture, how you're expanding the culture with different clients. You're talking about working with McGill, right? You're doing it differently and you're, you're doing it while being yourself. So how do you reconcile that into your creative agency? Hmm. Mm. Or do you? I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> the question to be honest so being a black owned what does that mean like being, this, okay. what does that mean to you basically to me it's something that goes without saying like a lot of the the press that we did and everything like yes we talk about diversity and all those things but you know at the end of the day uh you know we're not trying to be hired because we're just because we're black or where we want to be hired because we're good at what we do and we bring value and are the fact that we're black that also brings value but i feel like it's something that we don't have to it's something that's unspoken it's something that goes without saying it's not yeah. something that that to me diversity brings brings value just because it's something that isn't very common in the creative sphere right now it's always the same people doing the same things with their with the same backgrounds and experiences and so the fact that we're from a different background and we're doing the making the effort to build a team and work with people who are also um, of diverse backgrounds like that brings value in and of itself like I don't I don't think it's something that we need to um, cool. it's not something that we we have to advertise so much to showcase yeah um, mm -hmm. because it's just something that comes natural to us I feel um, like our blackness is just part of who we are so it's not something that we we don't have to try hard or you know so that's that's mm -hmm. how i see it we're not it's not forced it's just naturally is and it's it's a it's ingrained in the culture of sis and kem and why we exist and also a lot of it you know i'm not even sure if i'm really answering your question but like i feel like a lot of it as well too like the whole black owned label is not really just for the people that are clients that we work with. It's really for other people, other kids who mm -hmm. are from other environments, from Moriano, you know, Bergs, you know, DG, wherever, any hood in, in the city that you're from uh, a, 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 in, a impoverished neighborhood and it's like, oh shit, like, Ash and Miro, they're black, they look like me and they have a creative agency and they're doing that, you know what I mean? So it's more awareness for them so they could go out and go do that and not have these um, barriers, these mental barriers in their head because, you know, from my experience, you know, I used to have, Hannah's gonna kill me, but imposter syndrome. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, we had yeah. 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 She's like, yeah. for that, but like, yeah. but like, kind of like, you know, like, should I even be in doing this? Like, there's no other like black English speaking creative dude who looks like me who's doing this. Should I be doing this? And it's like, I was mentally um, able to ov overcome that, but I know yeah. that's not a reality for a lot of other kids. They might not have that that mental. Um, strength to yeah. overcome that so we have to kind of be loud and having these labels and stuff it will help them to really like quickly identify like oh a reference point you know it's just us being kind of a reference point at the end of the day mm -hmm. and, I, and i like that because and i think both of you what you guys are saying resonate a bit with the way we see i guess our podcast and maybe i'll speak for for myself and alexander tell me if i'm wrong but you know we out there we do what we're doing right and then you know i think that I don't know if we've ever be called a black on podcast. I don't know, but like we're just out there in our culture and who we are in a blackness just resonate into everything that we do and to the people mm -hmm. that we invite on yeah. the table, the subjects we talk to, right? It's just being alive. Exactly. As a black person. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
you know activism already i think <laughs> yeah. exactly like, it's like just exactly. existed <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean you know what i mean like you, we're saying like i'm black is but like when we take a picture of us like i'm black so like exactly so so yeah. i think there's this this element as well of like you just need to be comfortable moving uh, in any spaces we want to move in yeah. you know what i'm saying and i think that's the hardest part yeah i think it's being able to go into a space where it wasn't meant for you exactly and still make shit happen mm. in that space and create and that's you know the, the same thing with Anna since we we're talking about her like doing this at the Musée des Beaux Arts mm -hmm. it's not just a matter of like it's a space it's a museum where like they stole shit from mm -hmm. us or like we don't have that kind of the same relationship with yeah. fine arts per se even though you know why people love Basquiat I mean I think mm -hmm. it's, a, mm -hmm. it's the most expensive piece sold in the US right but we still don't feel um, mm -hmm. and I think it's also like you know what you guys are doing is also like you said like you're creating a space for other folks to say okay these guys are doing it right now and you said like you said you're babies but even at this stage you're even like miles away from where other Facts. folks have been yeah. you know what I'm saying Facts. so at the end of the day like if someone asks me do I know a creative agency like you know, yeah. for sure, it's the same thing's gonna come to mind like this because and because they did the moving. right thing. Because exactly. Like, or people don't want to deal with accountants. They don't want to do trademarks. Oh no, it's gonna be fine. And next thing you know, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, like, they so. don't like. And I think it's back. I think we're all that, God. Um, it's about the process of doing boring shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But these boring shit see. legitimate yeah. you in so many ways. So like, oh, you you mm -hmm. want a bursary? Then they're gonna ask you for your number, the number of your of your corporation, and mm -hmm. oh shit, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have bursary. Then you say there's no capital, and then after that you just serve yeah. people on the law and receiving like e transfers. Mm -hmm. But at some point your e transfer, you have a limit, and at some point you need to go like, yeah. you yeah. know what I'm saying, genre. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and if you if you want to get if you want to get those bigger checks, like people are gonna look to see if you have that. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's another thing too. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think that's that's about it for us. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to say? Any plugs you want to give? Any shout outs or anything? Um, shout out to everyone who's out here doing you know what they got to do. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to La Rue and Spiel. Um, mm, you know, never never was average. Um, you know, Marcus, um, every every black creative who's doing anything, movement, the podcast community here in Montreal, everyone that is doing something that looks like me, like I love that. That inspire me. That 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 motivates me and Ash to continue. Yes. So, as much as we're on our personal journey, just realize that we're a fan of everything what everyone else is doing. And yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no, same. Every like a lot of people ask us like, oh, like, you know, what are your inspirations? And it's literally y'all. Like everyone in the city who's doing something, um, that's our biggest inspiration mm -hmm. and motivation. Like, you know, people are like, oh, we're trying to get like you, and it's like, no, we're trying to get like you. You know, <laughs> that's black um, people though. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, just shout out to everyone doing their thing. I'm really proud of everyone and proud to see what everyone's doing and it's really uplifting and it helps us keep pushing forward all right so yes, thank you. thanks so all right so ça va être tout pour notre épisode d'aujourd'hui avec euh, six cinquième donc euh, n'oubliez pas de vous abonner à les généraliser sur uh, podcast uh, apple podcast spotify toutes autres plateformes on est aussi sur youtube on publie un épisode chaque deux semaines donc si vous avez des questions suggestions whatever hit us up sur twitter instagram ou sur facebook donc euh, mon nom est Ramsey je suis avec Alexander. et je suis avec Ash And Miro. All right, the generalist. See you next time.